The EO also allows us to designate other sectors in the future as Secretary Pompeo and me think is appropriate. Second, we are announcing 17 specific sanctions against Iran's largest steel and iron manufacturers, set three Seychelles-based entities, and a vessel involved in the transfer of products. As a result of these actions, we will cut off billions of dollars of support to the Iranian regime, and we will continue our enforcement of other entities. Third, we are taking action against eight senior Iranian officials who advanced the regime's destabilizing activity and were involved in Tuesday's ballistic missile strike. Secretary Pompeo will comment more on this. Today's sanctions are part of our commitment to stop the Iranian regime's global terrorist activities. The President has been very clear we will continue to apply economic sanctions until Iran stops its terrorist activities and commit that it will never have nuclear weapons. I'll now turn it over to Secretary Pompeo. Thank you, Stephen. Good morning, everyone. Uh, today, President Trump is delivering on the pledge that he made. Uh, the day after Iran attacked American forces in Iraq, there will be a series of new sanctions. Secretary Mnuchin just mentioned uh, eight senior Iranian officials that are responsible for the regime's violence, both at home and abroad. Uh, we're striking at the heart of the Islamic Republic's inner security apparatus. These sanctions targets include the Secretary of the Supreme National Council and the Commander of the Basij Forces. That's the regime's brute squad, which has in the last few months killed approximately 1,500 Iranians who were simply demanding freedom. Our action also targets other senior leaders close to the Ayatollah. They've carried out his terrorist plots and destabilizing campaigns across the Middle East and around the world. They've employed soldiers across the region's battlefields. They've trained militias in Iraq, Syria, and elsewhere in the arts of domestic repression. Today, they're accountable for murder and mayhem. The goal of our campaign is to deny the regime the resources to conduct its destructive foreign policy. We want Iran to simply behave like a normal nation. We believe the sanctions that we impose today further that strategic objective. Our campaign is composed of diplomatic, economic <coughs> components that have deprived the regime of billions in revenue that regime has used to fuel death and destruction across the Middle East and all across the world. Sadly, the previous administration had opened up revenue streams for Iran. Um, but under our administration, revenue, oil revenues are down by 80 percent, and Iran cannot access roughly 90 percent of its foreign currency reserves. And not even two weeks ago, President Rouhani of Iran admitted that our sanctions have cost Iran over $200 billion in lost foreign income and investment. As long as Iran's outlaws' ways continue, we will continue to impose sanctions. Finally, I want to reiterate President Trump's concern for Americans and dual national citizens detained inside of Iran. Iran knows they, these individuals have committed no crime. They know the charges against them are fake. And we will do all that we can to get each of them returned home safely to their families. With that, we'll take just a few questions. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Secretary, the administration said this this strike was done based on an imminent threat. But this morning, you said we didn't know precisely when and we didn't know precisely where. That's not the definition of imminent. The president has also suggested that there was some sort of attack being planned against an embassy, perhaps several embassies. Can you clarify? Did you have specific information about an imminent threat, and did it have anything to do with our embassies? We had specific information on an imminent threat. And those threat stream included attacks on U.S. embassies, period, full stop. So you were, you were mistaken when you said you didn't know precisely when and you didn't know precisely nope. where. Nope, uh, completely true. Those are completely consistent thoughts. I don't know exactly which minute. We don't know exactly which day it would have been executed. But it was very clear. Qasem Soleimani himself was plotting a broad, large-scale attack against American interests, and those attacks were imminent. Against an embassy against American facilities, including American embassies, military bases, American facilities throughout the region. Mr. Secretary, yes, John. Mr. Secretary uh, in the initial hours after the missile attacks on uh, al-Assad and Erbil, it was, it was believed that Iran may have taken steps to avoid U.S. casualties. 
But then uh, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, uh, Mark Milley, came out, the Secretary of Defense came out, other officials came out to say, no, these missiles were intended to kill Americans. If it was Iran's intent to kill Americans, does that not deserve some sort of response? I mean, if somebody takes a shot at you and they don't hit you simply because you duck, does that mean that they weren't trying to kill you? So I'll, I'll defer to the Department of Defense on the details, but there's no doubt in my judgment, as I observed uh, the Iranian activity in the region that night, they had the full intention of carrying, killing U.S. Uh, forces, whether that was our military folks or diplomatic folks who were in the region. And I'm confident that the response the president taken is appropriate. Uh, the president said, we don't want war. We want Iran to behave like a normal nation. The reason that the Secretary Treasurer and I are here this morning is to continue this campaign, our strategic effort to get Iran to behave in a way that doesn't continue their 40-year-long effort to terrorize the world. Mr. Secretary, Mr. Secretary, Secretary Pompeo, do you believe that the Iranians shot down the Ukrainian international airways uh, plane? And if the Iranians shot that plane down, will there be consequences? Uh, we, we do believe that it's likely that that plane was shot down by an Iranian missile. Uh, we are, we're going to let uh, the investigation play out before we make a final determination. It's important that we get to the bottom of it. Uh, I've been on the phone. I was on the phone with President Zelensky. Uh, just before I came here, I was on the phone with my Canadian counterpart. Uh, they were working to get their resources on the ground to conduct that thorough investigation. We'll learn more about what happened to that aircraft. Uh, and when we get the results of that investigation, I am confident we, we and the world will take appropriate actions in response. And let, let, let me just. We allow the NTSB to uh, to work with the Iranians. Yeah, I was, I was just going to comment on that. The Treasury will issue waivers for anybody, whether it's Americans or others, that can help facilitate the investigation. Secretary, Secretary last time that you both uh, joined us in this room it was back in September. You were announcing additional sanctions, including on the Quds Force. And Secretary Mnuchin, at that point, you said, I think we've done more sanctions on Iran than anybody, and it's absolutely working. Since then, we've seen an escalation in violence from Iran, shooting down the drone, attacking the embassy, a uh, contractor who was killed, U.S. troops uh, that were wounded. <laughs> How are sanctions uh, keeping the United States, economic sanctions, keeping the United States, United States interests? more secure? I, I think we have a, a hundred percent confidence and we are consistent in our view that the economic sanctions are working, that if we didn't have these sanctions in place, literally Iran would have tens of billions of dollars. They would be using that for terrorist activities throughout the region and to enable them to do more bad things. And there's no question, by cutting off the economics to the regime, uh, we, we are having an impact. And as the President has said, uh, the fact that the Obama administration turned over $150 billion to the regime, we think we wouldn't be in this situation had that not been the case. May, may, I, just, may I just add, it, it's important to uh, keep in mind what's taking place in Iran today. This country has never been in the place that it is today. Big challenging problems. Their budget, they're going to fail by tens of billions of dollars of achieving their revenue for this year. They've got real challenges in figuring out how to make difficult decisions. Do you underwrite Hezbollah? Do you pick Hamas? Do you underwrite the Shia militias in Iraq? Or do you allow your people to have the opportunity to live the life they want and grow your economy? Those are the difficult choices that the regime is facing. And you can see the protests, protests that we expect will continue, that will demand from the Iranian regime that they begin to treat the Iranian people in the way that they so richly deserve. And this administration will continue to support those efforts as well. In the back. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. You mentioned secondary sanctions here. Uh, what is your message to our European allies who continue to do business uh, with the Iranians? And then specifically, if you can, will this impact the instex barter mechanism which was set up by a number of European countries to avoid U.S. sanctions and continue to do business without using the U.S. dollar? Sure. Thank you. I think those are both very important questions. So let me first comment on Instex. Uh, I don't believe there's been any Instex transactions. As we've made clear, we are working on a Swiss channel that we have approved for humanitarian transactions. We'll continue to allow humanitarian transactions. We've warned Instex and others that they, they will most likely be subject to secondary sanctions, depending on how they use that. So uh, that's absolutely the case. As it relates to the Europeans, both the Secretary and I have spoken to our counterparts in Europe several times over the last few days. 
We've emphasized the impact uh, and the issue of Iran has announced that they are no longer part of the JCPOA, and we've had very direct conversations with our counterparts about that. What is your definition of imminent? This was going to happen, and American lives were at risk. And we would have been culpably negligent, as the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff said, we would have been culpably negligent had we not recommended to the president that he take this action in Qasem Soleimani. He made the right call, and America is safer as a result of that. Go ahead. We're going to try to do what one question, question for everybody, just so that as many people can get questions. So I don't mean to cut you off, but we're trying to. Go ahead. I mean. I, I only differ from my colleague, but um, sir, uh, six months ago, Secretary Pompeo, the president said that U.S. intelligence agencies had been running amok. He spent most of the past uh, three years he's been in office denigrating and attacking the intelligence community and disputing findings, whether it's on Russia or North Korea or really any area that contradicts things that he has said publicly. Why then? Should Americans suddenly believe your assertions that you had good intelligence on this when the head of the executive branch has been casting aspersions on the intelligence community for most of his time in office? Uh, look, I served as the CIA director for the first year and a half of this administration. I watched the president rely on the work that the intelligence community did for the entire time I served as the head of the Central Intelligence Agency. I've watched him rely on the capable men and women who are delivering exquisite information to the executive branch. I watch the president have confidence in that information. Uh, we all challenge their work. We have to make sure we get it right. The intelligence community is not flawless. We, we, we get it wrong. In this case, the intelligence community got it fundamentally right. Even the reflections we've seen after the effect, after, effect, after the strike that Qasem Soleimani took has demonstrated that we were quite right. There was an imminent attack. There was active plotting. And we took an action that we thought was likely to create less risk for the American people, and I'm confident that we did that. Go ahead in the back. In the back. Thank you. you. Uh, thank you. This question is for Secretary Pompeo. There are reports that the Iraqi Prime Minister has asked you to start negotiating the withdrawal of U.S. troops from Iraq immediately. Is that the case? Can you comment on that? Yeah, he didn't quite characterize the conversation correctly. Uh, but uh, to the larger, more important point, we are happy to continue the conversation with the Iraqis about what the right structure is. Our, our mission set there is very clear. We've been there to perform a training mission to help the Iraqi security forces be successful and to continue the campaign against ISIS, to continue the counter-dash campaign. Uh, we're going to continue that mission, but as, the, as times change and we get to a place where we can deliver upon what I believe and the President believes is our right structure with fewer resources dedicated to that mission, we will do so. We also have today a uh, NATO team that's here uh, at the State Department working uh, to develop a plan which will get burden sharing right in the region as well so that we can continue the important missions to protect and defend and keep the American people safe while reducing our cost, our resources and our burden and the risk to our soldiers and sailors who are in the region. Sorry.